All right, so in this one, we are gonna update our design a little bit. So the Jumbotron here is full width, but the content in the inside is still where it sits right now. In fact, it would be better aligned with the rest of everything else. Um, although it is aligned pretty well, it could be done a little bit better. So let's go ahead and take a look. First off, we're gonna go into the base.html and then home.html, where the Jumbotron is actually being rendered. Um, so if we look at base, we see that the Jumbotron is inside of this container. Now, if we take it outside of that container, it's gonna change drastically of what that Jumbotron looks like. So we refresh in here, and now it's at full width. Uh, that's pretty good, that's cool, that's what we wanna see. But now we gotta think about, okay, since the Jumbotron is now this full width, the content on the inside is not. So let's go ahead and take a look at that Jumbotron and see how we might adjust this to actually fit better with the rest of the content. Well, just a second ago is within a container. So maybe if we add that container inside of the Jumbotron class, it will work. So let's go ahead and add a container here. And then I'm going to close off that container with a new div. And now if I refresh in here, voila, now we have um, an actual Jumbotron that actually fits a little bit better with the full screen color, right? And so there's a lot of things that we can actually do to this Jumbotron in addition to what we have here. So if I click on the Jumbotron and inspect element, I see that I can actually grab it. And then over here on the right, we see the styles for this background color. So we can actually adjust this background color to something that we might want that fits a little bit better with what we're working on. So I'm gonna go into a green here and I'm just gonna leave it around that green. So this is the color that I actually want to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this color here. I'm gonna go back in this Jumbotron and in block style, I'm gonna do dot Jumbotron because it's the Jumbotron class and I'll do background dash or background color and use that color we just grabbed. So the curly brackets, so this is all CSS stuff. Uh, so if we refresh in here, it's now showing us uh, this new color. Cool, so now it's actually showing a little bit closer to what Django might actually look like, right? That green color for Django. Uh, the Django color is probably a little bit darker than that actually, so let's go here. Um, of course, you can get the actual color on the Django website, but we're gonna leave it just with that. All right, so one other thing we wanna do is change this text color so that it actually can be red. And the color that we want is white, because uh, that fits a little bit better with Django. So if we see white here, we can actually add it in as an element style. Um, and of course, white, if you wanted to use white, you could use the RGB color, or we could use, um, we could use hashtag, FFF, that would be another one. So let's do that. We're gonna use color and do hashtag FFF. And we refresh in here, cool. So that looks a little bit better as far as the branding is concerned, at least for the Jumbotron. Um, and granted, you could have the top navigation bar doing more or less the same thing, right? So if we inspected that element, we could go into the nav bar and kind of see which one is actually controlling the color, which is this very top one and you would see background color here, and you could change it to be in that same green if we really wanted to. So let's actually keep it like that. And this one's gonna be a global style. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to jump into my style sheets, and we're gonna look in for, um, we wanna see the CSS that's controlling that. So let's go to navbar static top.css, and notice we have a, a class called navbar static top, and it's located on this navbar class. So here's where I could do background and color and add in that same color and we refresh in here uh, let's make sure we save it it's not coming through you should probably know why it's not coming through which i'll ad address in just a moment but once we did have that color we also see this little uh, space here so that space is coming right below that nav bar it's actually adding in a little padding there um, so that padding or margin bottom is something we might not want to have uh, but it's also showing us that there's still a uh, margin bottom coming through in general. So let's just say margin bottom and we'll explicitly say zero pixels and we'll give it important. So this one, I actually only want it to be like that only when that Jumbotron is showing up. That's when I want it to see. I mean, we might, we might test it on other pages and see that we always want the margin bottom to be zero, but I only want it when the Jumbotron is actually there. So let's go ahead and copy this. So now in our home.html, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that same style uh, or the same class, which was dot, let's see, let's take a look. It was dot 
navbar dash static dash top. Of course, you could use the other navbar ones too, but we'll use navbar dash static dash top. And we're going to add that margin bottom. So I just copied that whole thing right there. And adding important means that it's going to override uh, other things that come in before it for sure. Um, so now, and we now have that, you know, it's set up a little bit better for us. But why isn't that top color actually coming through like what we wanted? Well, if you remember back, once we change the style sheets, we actually have to go into our server and do Python manage.py and collect static. And this will collect our static files. So we just type out yes, press enter, and we've got no, nothing actually changed, zero modified. So let's save it and make sure that we do have it modified uh, and say yes. It's still saying that nothing changed. So let's go ahead and run the server and we'll take a look at this. It's still coming through as the other static top, now bar top. We take a look, it's actually not collecting our static files here. Um, so this is actually coming to be a little bit of a problem for us. So static and env, static root. Ah, there's the problem right there is we're actually changing the static root setting. So let's go ahead and grab that copy again or the color there. And we'll go into our static in pro because we want to use the correct one, which does not have the other side. So as you noticed, when we did change the static and static root one, it didn't have the um, actual results we wanted, so let's do this again. So Python manage.py, collect static, and we say yes. This time it actually collected it, and if we go back in here, we refresh, we now see that our new actual color is actually coming through there. Um, this looks kind of awkward, at least on this page, so if we go to about, or contact, excuse me, uh, it looks a little bit better. Um, the reason it doesn't look, it looks kind of funny on this page is because of that line there. So if we inspect this element for that line, we can see that that line is in border color. So if we added a different border color, let's say a green, maybe like even a lighter green, something like a, about that, we can use that one instead. So going back into that CSS, we add border color and we paste that new one in. And again, we're gonna wanna run collect static. Say yes, run the server again. Jump back in here. Now that line's looking a little bit better. Click on, a, on a, another page, we see that it still looks pretty good. That line is very subtle, but it's definitely there. Uh, if you zoom in really close, you can see that. Uh, but again, it's very subtle here, where it's more pronounced here, but it is separating from that Jumbotron coloring itself. Uh, so now the top bar here, uh, we have gray buttons or gray coloring here. So if we inspect the element for these, Again, these would be ones that we'd want to change globally, right? We see the branding color right here. So this one would be, we would want to change that to white probably to fit again with all the other color. And to be honest, the gray adds some nice contracts from the white brand and then gray for the other ones. Uh, the hover color is not great, which we'll change in just a moment. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Copy that right there. And we're gonna paste this in here into our customized CSS, right? So we're pasting that color in. And now what we wanna see is the hover color. So the hover class itself. So this is something gonna take a little bit of uh, experimenting on our N4. So the first one is I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this whole thing, paste it right below, and just add the attribute of hover after it. So colon hover. So this is when the mouse is hovering over it. And we could change this color here, or we could just leave it as white. So let's leave it as white and see what happens. Of course, we want to collect the static files, say yes, and run the server again. And now if we refresh in here, if we scroll over the MVP landing, it no longer changes colors uh, when we hover over it, but it does still work. It is showing us the actual correct uh, color that we had there. So if we wanted to do like a lighter color than that, we could obviously make it very similar to these other ones. So if we inspect the element, let's make it that same light color. So 777 is the color that we will hover to. Um, and if we wanted it even lighter than that, we could just go the opposite direction. But let's go ahead and leave it as that for a second. I'll refresh in here. Notice I did not collect static, but it's still showing up correctly. So that looks good. So now that we have this, um, let's actually change the hover color for these to a lighter color. Um, so it's not necessarily the exact same as the brand, but it's showing the other ones. 
Um, when you actually did this, you probably when you would actually do this on a real site, you would probably want it to be consistent on all across the board. But uh, we're going to actually change this to something different. So let's go ahead and just go and change these hover colors. So right now, I believe it's a pretty dark gray that's going to be hovering. But I want to grab the element. So this is the element right here that's going to affect the color. So this is it. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and copy this entire thing and bring it back into our text here. Paste that in. So this is the default state, so not the hover state. So if we add a hover state, we can just go in here and say hover and change this to like, let's say 333. Save that and we refresh. And now it's coming through as a little bit different of a color. Let's make it a little drastic first so we can see it, the difference. So red, there we go. So if we made it 333, that makes it a little bit darker. Or if we made it like 999, comes in a little bit lighter. It's a lighter of a gray. And that looks decent. Let's leave it as that. So now that we have this, this is actually how our branding is going to go through. But when we collapse it down, we see that that hover color for the button is a little slightly different than the rest of our, our actual um, page here. So I'm going to go ahead and inspect this element. and. Now I have that nav bar toggle. This is it right here. Uh, this is actually where it's going to be showing the color, which is this right here, so border color. So if we change that border color, let's change it to something drastic for a second, and we'll call it red. So let's break it down again. And now we have a border color, but that internal color is still showing up. We don't, maybe we don't even want a border color. Maybe we just want it to look like that. So let's do that. And I'm going to grab this and say border color. I'll just paste it in here. And we don't want to have a border color. For now, we're just going to leave it like that, but we'll come back to it in just a second. So back here, now when we hover over this, so this is the nav bar toggle, when we actually hover over it, we need to change that background color. So I'm going to make the, the guess that it's this right here. So nav bar title, toggle. And the reason I'm making that guess is because this background color right here is actually, if I click on it, it actually changes to gray. Uh, so that's the transparent, that's the color that we want our border color to be. So let's change this to being border color being transparent. So transparent and we'll say important. So we definitely want it to be transparent. And now the nav bar title, we want the background color to be the same as our nav bar color. So the background nav bar color, which is this up here. And we save that. And again, we'll say important as well. So if we refresh in here, now that, that toggle looks a little bit better. Um, the color itself, once we scroll over it, does not actually change, right? It's staying to being that dark green color. So if we actually make it the same as the border color, it would probably make a little bit more sense so we can actually see the difference. So when I actually come in here, uh, notice it is that color. Well, that's because we didn't change this to hover. So if we change it to hover, we refresh in here, now when we hover over it, it shows that. And if we wanted to change those lines, uh, but when we come off of it, it changes back. So that might be something that we want to have the default color of being the background color. So take off hover, there we go. And let's actually change the color inside of it as well. So let's see what that does. So color, and I'll just say white. And it's not actually changing those lines. So those lines is something that we might want to play around with a little bit. But I actually kind of prefer it with it being gray like this. It fits with the rest of our links very well. And we do see that there's a little bit of border color lines and stuff like that. So those are things that you can play around with on your own by using inspect element. Uh, but now this, this actually looks a little bit closer to actually branding it to being something different than Bootstrap. Obviously, anyone that works with Bootstrap would still know that this is a Bootstrap site. But um, it is at least for the end user, it doesn't look so much like a template. All right, so that's it for this version of customizing. Uh, in the next one, we're gonna, we're gonna customize this brand and then that's pretty much all we'll end up doing as far as the um, homepage is concerned with customizing, but I will add in a few other elements so it looks a little bit more uh, professional and, and ready to actually launch on a real service. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.